couples used to walk the sundown path. Kid ain't here for pleasure, though. But then... Somebody gets to the core before the kid. The floor starts giving way under the lightest step. A single panic squirt could bring the whole place down. So could a reckless kid, for that matter. Fragments of the old world rain in the sky. So much for boys and tomfoolery. Sky bridges link the path together. One of them bridges whips the kid along. Air travel always was an iffy proposition. But calamity changed everything, even where the wind blows. to the winds in the old days, we can do it again. But the question is, who else could have taken the core? Well, ain't no survivor stole the thing. Live munitions down the path. Find time to find them. It's wise to toss those things plenty far away. Gas fellas need some shut eye from time to time. They get real cranky. An 
all this toil, Kid keeps coming back to an overwhelming question. Who else could have survived the calamity? So he didn't find the core that time, but that ain't about to stop us. The dead welcome him with open arms. The calamity took everybody after all. Kid sees it plain, frozen faces all around. You don't much care to see him. Not like this. These folks never saw the calamity coming, but someone did. Someone close. Someone who ain't like Mr. Beckley and his kindly wife. It was someone like him. Kid sees him there agape, in the flesh. It's a snag or two trying to get to him. He ain't about to stop, no matter what. He's got so many questions, after all. Just ain't got time for answers. The Tunder Brothers didn't make it. They never saw what it was like beyond the walls. Nor did the Bird Boy didn't make it. The Jawsons, they didn't make it. Grady Sr., Grady Jr., they didn't make it. But him, he survived. Kid finds proof enough that man ain't from around here. Just think, without that man, we wouldn't be here right now, would we? The core survived as well. Kid does what he has to do. And then, what do you say to a man who's seen too much? Kid hasn't a clue, but he says this. We have to go. Please. He's a proper gentleman, that man. His name is Zolf. No hiding, he's an Ura. Folks like him ain't never been a common sight in Ceylandia. He's relieved to see a living face or two. The kid and I introduce ourselves in kind. 
both to him and to each other for the first time. We fought the Ura decades ago, but that was then. Things are different between us now. For Zolf, Ceylandia was like a second home. He's real worried about his first home, too. Far to the east. He was born in the Tazzle Terminals. The Ura sent him on a mission of peace to our city, and he's lived here ever since. The cores, they remember. That's why this place is coming together. That's why things are gonna be all right. Well, look what we have here. The lost and found. Here, kid takes fragments of the old world and makes them whole again. All it takes is some fragments, and the Bastion makes it good as new. We tracked down a couple more cores near the edge of the city. No use praying to the gods these days. No time for it either. Pith Orchard. Place is a dead end in more ways than one. Folks used to make pilgrimage here to pay their respects to Pith, the bull. Well, the gods are long gone now, and the Orchard core is long gone too. Seems Pith ain't much of a watchdog. The gods don't care about trinkets, but the kid ain't no god. Pith stood for something once. Something real. In time, though, the bull stopped being a symbol and started being decoration. He couldn't even save his loyal subjects. Pith makes a decent scarecrow, at least. Then Pith lights up like a rodeo. Ain't easy punching through his hide. Him to bits. Must have been guarding that shrine. So what'll it be? Invoke the gods or tell them off? Piv. 
you don't need favors from the likes of him. On second thought, maybe he does. Well, if the gods are alive, they must be plenty sore. Trying. Kid ain't found the core. At least he found Zolf's precious shrine. Now we can build a shrine of our own, though I got some alternatives in mind. 